When we teach place value, the students need to know basically three terms that we use with the language in place value. So standard form would be when you have a simple number. So for the students, something like this they might see. And they learn how to say it correctly. So this would be 14,076 and five hundredths. Now, they don't use the word and unless it's to signify a decimal. In expanded form, now, the students are just taking the number and expanding it, stretching it out. So if we were to do that to this number, some of the strategies we tell the kids is start with the first number is 1. Now, they might recognize it's 10,000 right away, but for those kids who don't, one of the strategies and systems we use is to count how many numbers are over from that one. So as you can see, I counted one, two, three, four. So that means I'm going to have to have four zeros in the expanded form with that. So that would make sure that they get the place value right. So that's 10,000. Now for the four, put the four, count how many numbers. I've got one, two, three. So I'm going to need three zeros. And then I'm going to add that to the other part of the number. Well, I notice I have 7. And there's one zero because it's the 10, so uh, 70. And then I stretch out the number, and I know that there's six ones, and there's no numbers beside it, so I don't need that. When we put the decimals into expanded form, this one is simply just adding the 500s on. Now, this is one way of doing expanded form. The other way would be to expand it even more and stretch the number out and recognize that there is one ten thousand. Students at the end of grade five should be able to do this. There is four thousandths. There is seven tenths. There are six ones. And the real challenging part is there are five hundredths. which would look like that. So that is where they should be at by the end of grade five. Some of them are find it OEK to do this one, but they have a hard time getting to the second form of expanded form. Now, another strategy is going the opposite direction. So if I were to clear this, let me just erase some of this. We are going to give you an example that they're going to work the other direction. And one of the things I tell the kids to do is so they don't forget zeros. That's probably the biggest problem kids have when working with the place value is they forget that there's zeros that hold the places. So common problem the kids will do, and here let me show you. I'm going to write one out that is in expanded form. So simply put, I'm going to do... And 3,000, and 40, and 2. This is a simple example, but for some of the students, one of the common mistakes they will make is just going and putting the numbers together. And this number would be 4,342. Well, we already know that that's not true because we see 400,000 in this place. So that is a common mistake that students make. And to help them stop this mistake, here's one of the strategies we teach. So for the kids that aren't sure, I tell them to put a four and then count one, two, three, four, five zeros. So they know their number is going to have five numbers after the four. That helps them not lose track of where zeros are. So they move on to the 3,000. It should be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then I put the 3. Then the 40, I have 1, 0, so I'm going to count 1, and then I'm going to put the 4. And then the 2. Now they can see where there needed to be zeros put in the number. And they will not lose track of them in the process. So that is a strategy that we use to go to expanded form. Another strategy that we talk about is the last one is written form. Some of my students have a hard time putting something um, from words into a number. So if I were to write an example of, let's say, 300, um, 
17 sorry for my penmanship thousand um, two hundred six okay some of the kids have a hard time putting this into um, a des uh, an actual standard number, which we know is now just a regular old number. So one of the things I ask the kids to do is pay attention circle. Where do they see the word thousand? And go from that everything on this side would be in the thousands. Then we have our hundreds, tens, and ones. And if there happens to be anything after the word and, it would go on this side. So if I were to add and, let's say, 12 thousands, they know that this would come after the decimal. Now, when we go from that, if we take a look, I'll just switch over colors, we have 317. I ignore and just focus on this part of the number. And it's hard for students to do that because the common mistake is they want to write um, that this is 3,000 right away and they put it in the wrong spot. So 317 looks like that. They know what 317 looks like. And it's 1,000. So I know that it's going to come here and there's going to be three spaces coming after. So 206 is going to be the next part of the number. And the word and, I know there's a decimal. And 12 thousandths? Now, small students will write this. This is the first mistake they make. It is 12, but for decimals, it has to end in the thousandths. And if you remember lessons from before, those are the tiny little cubes. And they were thousandths were actually in the third place. So, what we're going to do, I'll just erase those. And it has to go 12 thousandths. Here's the 12 thousandths, and there has to be a zero here. Otherwise, it would have been 12 hundredths. So that is a strategy, too, when they're going from writing into standard form.